Hey guys, welcome to PB Garage. I'm Sean. Today we're going to have a look at preparing some Audi 2.8 heads to use on my 2.7 motor. But before we get into that, I just want to show you guys, I finally got this thing in the garage and it's not leaving until it has a 2.7 back in it and leaves under its own power. Right now, a bit of an issue. I bought this thing as a rolling chassis, no drivetrain. It was a manual car, but Everything's been removed, so I'm gonna have to rebuild everything from the ground up. And uh, shortly I'm gonna be pulling the subframes out of out from under the car so I can kind of go over everything, do a little bit of a restoration, and put everything back together again. As you can see, lots of work to do in here. Originally the car came with a set of platinum colored seats, so I was able to find a set of black seats and I'm gonna be using those. But as you can see, a lot of assembly required. And the car also came with, oh, quite a bit of water in the trunk lid by the looks of things. Uh, and a bunch of parts here in the uh, trunk. So I gotta go through all that, sort everything out, put everything back together. But before I start working on this chassis, let's get us some heads ready for the motor. Okay, so I've got both my cylinder heads here. Now I've got this one out of a 2.7, this one's off of an APB particularly, and these are out of a 2.8 that I pulled in the junkyard. This engine code would have been an ATQ. And um, right off the hop, you guys can see where the big advantage is with the 2.8 head is in the size of this intake port. And I wanna show you guys just how big of a difference it is. So if we go from this port, and I've got about 43 mils, and bring that guy up here, you can see right away, you know, how huge that port on the 2.8 is by comparison. And so I'm going from 43 mil out to about 57 mil looks like. So huge increase in the size of the port. Now, obviously what that's gonna mean is when I go to assemble everything, I'm gonna have to machine the intake manifold because it's gonna be sized with this uh, size of a port on it. And I'm trying to feed air into a gigantic port like this. So I'm gonna to have to machine that intake manifold out and hopefully match those uh, or match the bigger port up. And, you know, I've never had to do anything like that before in terms of something that big, trying to match the port size. So it's gonna be interesting to try and do it, but um, hopefully I can get it fairly even so that I won't disrupt the flow too much and I can take advantage of these big ports on the 2.8 head. Now, something I'm gonna have to change to be able to use this, and I don't know if this is true or not. People say that it is, people say that it isn't, but apparently the 2.7 head has sodium filled exhaust valves and the 2.8 head does not. And I don't know if that's just different models or you know, what uh, if there's some 2.8 heads that have sodium filled valves and some don't, or if there's some 2.7s that do or don't. You guys probably know better than I do, and if you do know, please uh, leave that information in the comments. But I'm gonna have to pull the exhaust valves out of this head, and supposedly they drop right into the 2.8 head, so I'll make that change so I don't have any heat management issues with the 2.8 head. A few other little uh, differences between the two. You know, the valve cover is a little bit different uh, with the venting for the PCV, but that should be pretty easy to solve. I'll probably end up just putting the 2.7 uh, valve covers on the 2.8 heads. So first I've got to strip everything down. I'm going to totally strip these 2.7 heads. I'm going to totally strip these 2.8 heads and just make sure that the 2.8 heads are uh, in good condition, don't have any cracks in the casting, stuff like that, and make sure that everything's clean. And then maybe the more exciting part is when I go to reassemble this and put those exhaust valves in from the 2.7 head, is I've got these right over here, which is a set from SuperTech of upgraded valve springs and titanium valve spring retainers. So what that's going to allow me to do when I go to put everything back together and I upgrade uh, all of the valve springs to these units from SuperTech is it'll allow me to raise the red line of the engine quite a bit. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think the factory red line on the 27 7200 RPM, and with this kit in the 2.8 head, I should be able to rev everything out to 8500 RPM. And I'm hoping 
that by doing that, I'm gonna have a bit of an advantage over the other boys in this competition because other than that, you know, Barry's got rods, so obviously he's going to be able to use a bit more ignition timing, especially in the mid-range uh, with those KO4s. I might be a little bit behind because Blake's got that big single turbo, but stock rods, and I'm hoping those extra RPM is just gonna give me the advantage I need to uh, have the fastest car in our, in our little competition here. So with that in mind, the next thing I've gotta do is spin some wrenches and take everything apart. Now I thought we talked about this last video guys. What's with all this goop? Look at the goop. There's goop here. Why? I don't even understand it. Next time you guys are working on a motor and your buddy's like, oh, just goop it. Just be like, no. Just the worst. Oh my God, look at how much is on the inside. That means you had it out. Which means you could have just replaced it with a proper one and not goop the, ah, uh, so frustrating. Look at that. So now I've got my cams removed. It gives me access to everything on the top of the head here. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull all my lifters out and then start to disassemble this valve train, take everything apart so I can clean the head properly. I've got my cookie sheet here and I'm going to remove everything, keep everything organized, make sure that everything's identified so I know which cylinder it needs to go back into, which hole specifically each bucket goes into. But, you know, I don't know how much of a difference that makes or how much it matters because I've always heard that you need to reassemble everything perfectly right back to where you got it from. But I'm gonna be changing all these exhaust valves, so I'm going to be lapping all of the valves in to make sure that everything seats properly. I'm going to be changing all of these valve springs everywhere, the retainers, the keepers, and some of these buckets actually have um, some funny looking kind of wear on them. So like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but on the top of this bucket here, there's like a weird wear ring and there's like some scratches. So the cams look fine, but I'm wondering if some of these um, buckets, if the, lifter has collapsed like this one for example i can tell like there's no resistance on that adjuster so i don't know does that mean that that's collapsed the head's been sitting off a motor for a really long time losing all its oil so are they just they've pumped down maybe the lobe was sitting on that lifter and squeezed all the oil out over time i don't know or does that mean that they're collapsed because some of the other buckets here are still rock hard like they're stiff like they're still pumped up with oil. So I don't know if it matters. Um, I'm probably going to be swapping out some of these buckets for ones that don't have this funny wear on it. So I don't know, does it matter which hole they go back into or does it not? People replace these lifters all the time when they collapse. So I don't know, you guys tell me, get in the comments, let me know what you think. Does it really matter that much where everything goes back together if I'm going to be lapping all the valves and um, breaking the motor back in again, so I don't know. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start pulling my valves out. Now, this is the kind of valve spring compressor that I, that I use, it's made by OTC. And I really like this style, it's what I've always used. Obviously there's a ton of different styles of uh, valve spring compressors out there, but these ones seem to work maybe better than anything else that I've used. So I would recommend getting something like this. Now you wanna make sure that you're using the correct insert for your bore. Um, so basically this thing's gonna be just a touch smaller than the outside diameter of my bucket here. And as I'm going down in, I'm gonna make sure that this 
doesn't, it's smooth on the sides, but I wanna make sure that it doesn't come into contact with the edges of that bore so I don't scratch that bore as I'm compressing that valve spring. And basically, so I'm gonna get in here, I'm going to put the opposite end against my valve. And then I'm being very careful of my cam journals here and I'm being also very careful uh, to get down that bore and not scratch the bore that my lifter is gonna sit in there. And it is fairly snug. And then I just wanna make sure that I'm sitting on the top of the retainer properly. I'm just gonna slowly ease in. You feel that just pop as it unseats the keepers. And then I'm gonna get in here with a small magnet. Now I'm just having a bit of a time getting those keepers to let go of the valve stem. So I'm just getting in here with my little pick and I'm just gonna very carefully unseat those from the valve stem because they seem to be holding on. So now that I've got my valve spring compressed, I'm gonna have a look. I can see my keepers right there. And I'm just gonna go in with my magnet and pull those guys out. So I've got my keepers and then fairly simple, I can just back this spring compressor off carefully, making sure I stay lined up down the bore so I don't scratch that bore. And then with my compressor free of everything, I'm just gonna set it gently onto the next valve that I'm gonna work on. And can grab my retainer right here. That's the little cup that sits on top of your valve spring. And then pull my valve spring out. There's that valve spring. And after all that, I can just reach through here. I should probably remove this guy. You can just reach through. Oh, that valve stem seal is really hard. But there's my intake valve. So I'm gonna keep that guy lined up at the right one. Now that I've got that all out, I just have to do that, um, I guess 59 more times because I'm taking apart this set of heads and a set of 2.7 heads and that's it. Hey guys, I've got my head all disassembled. My next step was going to be to put the 2.7 exhaust valves in and just put the whole thing back together and put it on the motor. But after taking it apart, I realized how kind of scuzzy this cylinder head is inside. So I want to get it professionally clean before I reassemble everything. Before I end the video though, I wanted to show you guys something. Now the reason I wanted to put 2.7 exhaust valves in here was because there's a lot of debate on the internet about whether the 2.8 exhaust valves are sodium filled or not. So I took one of the valves here and I threw it up on my bench grinder and I took a bunch of material off. Now, if you guys can see there, there is actually an, a hollow inside to this valve. And what I wanna show you guys, so I've got a pick here I'm going to, cause I think probably what happened you know, this thing was so hot when I was grinding away at it. A bunch of the sodium probably already is out of it. But there's this white stuff in there. And if I put this, well, I can see already just the moisture in the air. You can see it bubbling. This is a little bit of water. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. Ah, it was just a tiny little bit, but it's definitely sodium in there. So now we know this ATQ head off of a stock 2.8 automatic A4 B5 um, had exhaust valves that were sodium filled. So that should settle that debate at least. I don't know, you know, maybe some different models of the 2.8 did and didn't, but 
In this case, they were sodium filled. I wouldn't have even had to change them for the 2.7 exhaust valves if I didn't want to. So thanks for watching guys. Tune in next time. I'm gonna clean this all up. I'm gonna get all my parts ready. I'll get those SuperTech springs and retainers uh, and everything set up so that we can reassemble and put these on the motor.